Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Regiment Focus video with me, Mordian Glory, as your host for today. So, this video should be going up uh, in the morning, tomorrow morning. So, it's the 27th today. I've just finished doing the uh, Catalan Conscript video. And I'm also doing this Mordian, uh, Vostroyan video because the plan is to get this uploaded first and then when the um Valhallans are revealed uh, later I, and the conscript nerf is all the official conscript nerf is also unveiled I'll be able to focus a full video on that on the day it comes out so you lucky viewers are getting a nice bonus video this morning so without further ado let's take a look at the Vestroyan firstborn now I must say that I've always kind of had a bit of a soft spot for the Vestroyans, but despite the fact that technically they are the newest Imperial Guard models released by Games Workshop, sort of, well, army I should say, because KD has been around for ages, their plastics have been around for ages, and Castran plastics have been around for ages, Vestroyans are a metal army, and their range has... Sort of, it's got, it's a bit limited, unfortunately. They were released for a special campaign, the Medusa campaign. Um, but they sort of, I've never seen one on the tabletop, for example. I know that those people that collect them are diehard Vestroyan fans. Um, a bit like I'm a diehard uh, Morgan Iron Guard fan. I feel like Vestroyans are definitely a niche army. And not a lot of Imperial Guard players... Uh, have them, and I think the reason behind that is because they don't have that sort of nostalgic feeling to them. Now, maybe I'm a bit wrong. Maybe I'm wrong because obviously they they very easily could have a started feeling if you if you started getting war into Warhammer uh, at a relatively uh, late, later than I did. But what I'm saying is, for myself personally, I've always thought they were very cool, but I've never really had that nostalgic feeling. But I definitely, definitely, definitely would consider collecting an army of them at some point. Um, and if I don't, and I think if I hadn't got so heavily invested into Morden Iron Guard, I probably would have very much enjoyed having an army of Vestroyans. Um They're kind of a they're kind of like uh, a Mordian army, but they've got, you know, it's sort of that they wear flashy uniforms and everything, but they've got their whole unique shtick. And the whole um, sort of thing behind the Vestroyans, obviously Vestroyan players free to uh, expand upon this very vague overview in the comments. The whole thing behind the Vestroyans is that um, their weapons are uh, very, they're essentially every Lasgun is like a mastercrafted Lasgun. Um Every the we the Vestroyans have access to a lot of bionics, um, and their weapons are. Or even though they look like they're made out of like wood and stuff, they're actually master crafted. Um, and this is because they basically come. From, the planet of Vestroya uh, is sort of it's ruled by a sort of uh, the the tetriarchy uh, or the tetriarchs, and it's sort of ruled by an unusual. Um, mix of tech priests and normal humans normally the tech priests would not or the mechanicus would not really interact with the regular humans seeing them as inferior but of Vestroya they sort of they have a nice balance they're, they're equal equal footing and because of this the Vestroyans tend to have access to very very good equipment and their weapons tend to be uh, family heirlooms and I think also um, well not necessarily family heirlooms but unlike mass produced last guns where you know for a Maybe a Mordian regiment, which is a hive world, you produce a thousand, you know, you have a regiment, 10,000 Lasguns, and you lose them all in one day. It doesn't matter, they were just mass produced Lasguns. With the Vestroyans, they tend to try and look after their equipment. And uh, because their regiments are regularly reinforced from the home world, they're not just shipped out and then forgotten about, they are regularly reinforced. Um, which is really nice, cool bit of fluff, and it makes them kind of unique. Um, and I really, really like that. So, as you would expect, the Vestroyan doctrine is heavily focused on um, their improved tech, their ties to the Mechanicus. And because of this, their regimental doctrine is... Um, yeah, it says here, Indeed, every Vestroyan goes to war armed with a priceless heirloom built and maintained to a much higher standard than the rest of the Ashen Militarm. Even better than the Cadians. 
We should say something because Cadian, you know, people love the Cadian Laz rifles. They used to love them. Um, but yeah, the Vestroians, they really, really, um, their equipment is top of the range. Um, and I really like that sort of techno gothic vibe they've got because they are wearing ceremonial uniforms. They've got cool, like, hussar hats, but then all the guys have got bionic um, eyes and uh, breathers on. And a lot of the armor they're wearing um, looks quite ceremonial, but it's, it looks quite, it looks good in comparison to your standard flak vest. A lot of a lot of armored gauntlets and and whatnot, and heavy, thick, duty great coats. So, yeah, really love that vibe. And so, because of that, their regimental doctrine is called heirloom weapons. And without further ado, let's take a look at it. So. Um, each and every Vestroian weapon is lovingly handcrafted and engraved with intricate ornate detail. These are no artisanal trinkets, however, as victims of their deadly accurate firepower will attest. Units with this doctrine add 6 inches to the maximum range of heavy or rapid fire weapons they fire, which would normally have a range of 24 inches or more. Interesting indeed. Very interesting indeed. Now let's let's take a look at this again. Heavy or rapid fire weapons. So it's very specific. I think that's a bit unfortunate. I think it should have just been all weapons, except flamers, because there's only so maybe even all 15 inch, 14 inch flamers would have been a bit ridiculous. That would have been a bit ridiculous. But I think it should have been all weapons. Apart from maybe flamers, and flamers can have an extra three inches because there's only so far you can you can get a gout of flame, I suppose. Um, so I think it's really really cool. Six inches is the maximum range of heavy or rapid fire weapons that have over twenty four inch range or more. So your last pistols, they are they suddenly have a twelve inch range. But your bolters very much encourages you to give all your Vestorian Sergeant bolters, because then they've got 30-inch range bolters. All your lasguns, 30-inch range. All your heavy weapons, every single one of them. So what weapons, if we're looking at, at, at infantry weapons, what weapons can't take advantage of this? The grenade launcher, the melter, and the flamer. Let's, let's take a think. Plasma guns, they're rapid fire, so they're okay. Snipers, I believe, are heavy weapons, so they're okay. So bear in mind that means 42-inch range snipers. And all your heavy weapons are obviously heavy weapons, so they're all 20, they all get an extra 6 inches. Very, very nice. Um, don't forget, this affects infantry and vehicles. So let's look. So I'm going to cover all the things which I think are awesome about this, and then a couple of the things which I think are kind of sucky about the well one or two things about which i'm not sure is great so number one it is simple to remember it is very very easy and simple to remember everyone basically has six inch range except for las pistols which you're probably not going to they don't do anything anyway and three assault weapons yeah, that's it's very easy to remember. Unlike the Mordium one where you might forget your plus one leadership that you ranked up or you could easily forget uh, your Overwatch one. You could easily forget that. You, you could just forget your Mordium. You'd be like, oh, yeah. I think with the Mordium one, it's less likely that you're going to forget the Overwatch. But I think it's perfectly possible for the Mordium one you're going to forget your plus one leadership, which is really important. And I think it's also perfectly possible for the Catachan one to forget that you get plus one leadership for being near your officers. Whereas this, you're not going to forget it. It's not It's not like a two-parter where, oh, like the Catachan one where your infantry buff is completely different to your tank buff. This is simple. Very easy to remember. It's a flat, constant upgrade. And as we, as we said in the Catachan one, I think this is possibly better... It's equal to or better than the Mordian one because it is a simple, flat, constant, non-situational upgrade. This heirloom weapon, this regimental doctrine is always going to be in play. Always. You're never going to forget about it and it's always going to be relevant. So that's number one thing why it's, it's good. It's easy to remember and it's non-situational. It will always be relevant. Second thing... Well, third thing I should say is let's 
take a look at sort of how it actually changes the dynamics of the battlefield. So straight, let's go start from the bottom up. The LAS gun. 30 inch range basic weapons is amazing. Any guard player that has been on the receiving end of mass tile fire warriors will tell you how good 30 inch range basic weapons are. Tile pulse rifles have always been the bane of your of your basic guardsmen just because you've always had to move up to try and get into range of them and they've always been able to move back and in theory you know it, it can take you two or three turns to catch a bloody fire warrior if he keeps moving and firing moving and firing now thanks to the destroyers you can you can easily go toe to toe with tau fire warriors easily you in terms of a fire warrior versus a guardsman a, a Vostroyan Guardsman. A Vostroyan Guardsman is, is hitting, on, it's hitting on a 4+, plus like a Tau Fire Warrior. He's wounding on a 4+. Plus. The Tau's only wounding him on a 3+, plus, and they've both got maximum range. So, like, Vostroyan, having 30-inch basic weapons, you ask any Tau player. It's mo For a lot of Tau players, it's the reason they like Fire Warriors. Because it just is very... It's a very nice constant buff having a 30-inch range uh, weapon. Second thing about that, concentrating on Asgans, that stacks with your first rank fire, second rank fire. And don't forget Vestroyan conscripts. Every, you know, we're talking conscripts, you know, every Imperial Guard commander, it, we, don't know what the, we don't know what the nerf is going to be yet, but if it is what we think it's going to be, what it potentially could be, then conscripts are still going to be very usable. And if that's the case, then having conscripts which have got a rapid fire range of 15 inches is very very tasty very tasty indeed um, and don't forget this affects plasma guns so 30 inch range plasma guns the, a big sort of issue with plasma guns that in the past but not so much now is they were quite expensive which obviously doesn't matter anymore but 24 inch range was never really that it never really kept pace with your heavy weapons. You always sort of struggle. And I noticed that with my Mordium ones. I'm always struggling to keep my plasma guns and my las cannons, um, my plasma guns in range of the things I want to shoot my las cannons at. And I want to shoot both things at the same target. I don't want to split my firepower. It's not so much of a problem with the Vestorians anymore. Their plasma guns will now be able to easily keep range with their um, heavy weapons, which is, which is good. It's just another great boost. Uh, so that's the, the sort of special and basic weapons that have been improved. Sniper rifles, they already had a 36 inch range. Having a 42 inch range sniper rifle, it's nothing to be sniffed at. And it's, it gives a incentive to take snipers in a, in a Vostroyan army that aren't rattling snipers. Because if you're basically rattling, he's probably a auxiliar unit, which probably won't benefit from the uh, regimental doctrine. And so if you want to take sniper command squads now rather than uh, rattlings, you've got a reason to do that. Your, your sniper command squads can receive orders and they've got a 42 inch range. That's pretty good. It's not often you get into a sniper duel with your opponent. It's not often. I haven't seen it happen yet. But then again, I don't use snipers because I don't know. I feel like Mordians feel snipers would be kind of cowardly. But um, I can definitely see... If you, with snipers, are going to become more and more prevalent uh, as people have to start taking the ability to kill enemy characters and deal with hordes, snipers are, are on the rise. I've seen, it's a rare day I face an army without some kind of sniper in it now. Beginning of 8th edition, no one used them. Now, every Space Marine player I know takes one to two squads of snipers. Everyone who can. This means that your snipers will outrange their snipers, which means you can use your snipers to go hunting their snipers. Sniper, 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 sniper. Also, it means that your las guns are going to be more likely in range of their snipers as well. So, great. Moving on to the heavy weapons. Um, things like the auto cannon uh, and the mortar and um, stuff and maybe the missile launcher, they're not going to... They're not going to benefit from it too much. Most of the time, those having a 48-inch range is okay. It's good on the heavy bolter for because the heavy bolter its main main drawback has always been it's only a th well especially in eighth edition has been it's only got a short range thirty six forty eight inches is generally enough to cover the whole board thirty six inches isn't so 
That is a, that is important. Having a 42 inch range heavy bolter is fantastic. And guess what, guys? For Stroyan squads that you can buy from Games Workshop come with a heavy bolter. So it's absolutely fantastic. Heavy bolters are already good in 8th edition. Being able to have the best heavy bolters in the Imperial Guard, that we know of so far, is really awesome. And the fact that you get them easily. Whenever you, if you are starting to collect Restorians, you're going to have, or if you're a long-term Restorian player, you're probably going to have a boatload of heavy bolters you've not really been using. Now, if 8th edition wasn't already enough of an incentive to take them, the fact that you've got potentially the best heavy bolters, the best potentially the best standard heavy bolters in the game well i can definitely see uh vet destroying veteran squads rocking a heavy bolter and triple plasma gun that is going to be powerful very very powerful indeed um las cannons is a is gets an honorable mention as well the fact that you'd have a 54 inch range las cannon is significant because it means you'll be outranging your opponent's last cannons. And you might be saying to yourself, why is that such a big deal? Well, what if you are a um what if you are trying to protect your uh, heavy weapon teams, but they just keep getting sniped out by your enemy's heavy weapons because most heavy weapons have a uh, 48 inch range on most armies. Now your heavy weapons will be able to outrange their heavy weapon platforms. Imperial Guard, Vostroyan heavy weapon teams will be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Space Marine Devastators uh, and actually outrange them. And that is important and significant. A 54-inch range last cannon is, is important. Now, that's just looking at infantry weapons. Don't forget, there's a very, very good chance, I don't see why it wouldn't, that this will affect your tanks as well. And let's just go through the tanks it's going to affect. There's some which will benefit more than others. So ones which won't really benefit from it are the Vanquisher and the Lemurus Battle Tank. They've already got a 72 inch range. Having a 78 inch range isn't really a big deal for them, unfortunately. It will mean, however, that have that the sort of heavy bolters on your Lehman Russes um, will be able to keep pace. I often find that my heavy bolters struggle to fire at the same range as um, at the same range as my battle cannon. They often can't keep up, but now they should be able to. Um, but let's focus on the turret weapons. So the Vanquisher doesn't really need it. Battle cannon doesn't really need it. The mid-range tanks like. The, uh, or I should say actually, the Exterminator will benefit from it. The Lemus Exterminator will benefit from it because you'll have a 54 inch range Exterminator auto cannon. And that, now the Exterminator is not a great tank, but with the ability for it to stay still and fire twice now, well, or move a little bit and fire twice, um, that means that it is now definitely feasible. I'm going to run some exterminators in, in the upcoming battles. See if those eight shots are better or if it's better to have the twin fine battle cannons. Anyway, having eight shots on your exterminators and then have uh, is good, but if you want to fire it, that means they're potentially in range of enemy last cannons. Let's use devastators, for example, or, or, or razorbacks, last cannon razorbacks. Now, with this doctrine, you're good old-fashioned exterminators can sit a bit further back stay out of range of your opponent's uh, las cannons which are going to want to pop it and shoot back with impunity very very powerful so the exterminator i i think is the one that has benefited from it greatly uh executioner has yeah it's pretty good it's a 42 inch range um weapon but it doesn't really get you out of range of things like last cannon so it's not as useful same with the eradicator the eradicator is kind of poo anyway um so it's a bit of a shame the execution of the eradicator they, it's a night it's nice to have that little buff but it doesn't get your lemuruses out of enemy range any easier so it's not a huge problem those lemuruses will probably they'll be able to shoot things in the middle of the board either way so it's not a huge deal 
But it is nice that it means if you have a bunch of heavy bolters and exterminator, ex uh, not exterminator, eradicator or ex ex executioners, it means everything's firing force to train, which is nice. It's nice. Everything's got a buff there. Two tanks which have massively benefited from it. I'd say the ones that have benefited from it the most are the Punisher and the Demolisher. Because that's right, baby. Having a Punisher tank that can shoot at 30-inch range is insane. Put that Punisher cannon on a motherfucking... Um, Sorry, put the Punisher Cannon on a tank commander, have the tank commander, it won't have to move forward probably anymore, because 30 inch range is probably long enough to get your Punisher Cannon in range, turn 1 or 2. It's a huge distance, it's huge. Because if you only move 4 inches, if you're at maximum capacity, and with this, doctor, with this regimental doctrine, plus the ability to fire twice if you only move 4 inches, you're looking at a Punisher Cannon with a 34 inch range to get an extra 10 inches. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Plus, you'd be able to fire twice. So that's 40 shots. Ballistic skill 3 plus. <sighs> at 34, at a minimum of 30 inch range. Potentially, if you move a little bit, 34 inch range. Absolutely amazing. Number one drawback of the Punisher is its short range. That Everyone agrees on that. Everyone agrees on it. Now, the fa now that... Problem has gone away. Same with the Demolisher. Demolishers are great tanks. They're very, very expensive. But what they hit, they destroy. Now, you don't even have to w worry about them having to get too close to the enemy. It's absolutely fantastic. Sponsors that get affected by this, of you know, we're talking the plasma cannon ones. They're heavy. Having 42-inch range plasma cannons, that's pretty good. We've already talked about 42 inch range uh, heavy bolters extensively, but 40, but 30 inch range multi melters, boom! Having melters that have a melter range of 15 inches on a tank that plans to get close to the enemy anyway, whew, that is awesome. 30 inch range multi melters, that's the best melters in the game. Hands down, the best melters in the game. Better than Tau, better than anyone. And the best part about having the extra six inches on these tanks that would normally want to get up close and personal is it keeps you safe. It keeps you... If your opponent... is a, It means your opponent is going to have to basically, most of the time, move an extra six inches to try and get into... Uh, to get close to you. Because you're to get close to your... Uh, close range tanks to use their own melter guns when you think about it because you're going to be able to stay that little bit further away it is very very powerful very powerful so that's what I like about it I've obviously gone on and creed myself over how awesome this is but let's look at one one thing that springs to mind which I don't which is which is lacking is the first two doctrines we've seen have had leadership bonuses. Castrians get leadership bonuses and Mordors get leadership bonuses. Vostroyans don't. It's a single part bonus. The the Vostroy, uh, the uh, Mordian one was a two part. Tanks and vehicles get better overwatch plus your infantry get better leadership. The Castrian was a three part. Strength, leadership and your vehicles get um, more boom boom. Vostroyans is just one buff. That's it one so yeah it's simple but it's not extensive now then the enemy gets uh, moves on to uh, the enemy then the article moves on to um, it it explains about um, the, the destroying unique order I have to say I think the destroying unique order is very weak very very weak um, it essentially allows you the long and the short of it is you are able to shoot in close combat so this is what it says. Until the end of the phase, the ordered unit can fire any of its weapons while it is within one inch of the enemy, regardless of the weapon's type. So not just pistols. If they do so, they must target enemy units within one inch, so you can't sh shoot out of combat at something else, even if friendly units are within one inch of these units. So basically, for s if for some reason you, you forgot to fall back or you chose not to fall back, this is probably what you'd want to use instead of fixed bayonets. Because you've got the fixed bayonets order, which allows you to do stuff in combat. 
This means that you can fire your plasma guns, your flamers, your last cannons. You can do all that in close combat. The one which I think is hilarious is someone pointed out that you can use this to throw a grenade in close combat. Just like place a grenade in front of the enemy. I think it's weak. Honestly, I think it's very situational. Whilst your uh, regimental doctrine is fantastic and always going to be in play and is very easy to remember, I think you, you're going to easily forget about the Vestroyan uh, order. Repel the enemy. It doesn't... Yeah, it's just not very good, unfortunately. Um, but I guess you've got to have balance. You've got to have... You've got to have the rough with the smooth. You've got one of the most... You know, you've got a very strong um, regimental doctrine with heirloom weapons. Uh, but a very weak order. Um, the one other downside I'd say about heirloom weapons is... Um, in some cases it's just... It's, it's only really going to be... It's only really going to be useful the first turn or two most of the time. And then the armies get nice and close and start gunning each other down. And you're going to be wanting to get into rapid fire range anyway with your rapid fire weapons. So the red, so it is it is good and it will it will always be in play and it will always be useful. But um it's not it's not absolutely amazing and the order is is cack. The order is terrible. The order is rubbish. Um then the article goes on about how Vestroyan Scout Sentinels are going to be absolutely uh, amazing. Um, I don't really understand why. Because Scout Sentinels... I don't really know. Scout Sentinels... The, the most common variant that I see used is the Deep Strike Denier Fireball Sentinel. Um, the fact that the Vestorian thing doesn't even affect them. I think that's a bit rubbish, really. I think they just needed to show Scout Sentinels in the reveal, and so they did that, but whatever. They have got the Scout Vehicle. I don't think it's unchanged. At the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, you can move this unit up to 9 inches. It cannot end its move to 9 inches of any enemy models. Yeah, that's not changed. So, I don't really see how... Vestroyan Scout Sentinels are really going to benefit all too much from um, from regimental doctrines. Armoured Sentinels, I think, will, simply because Armoured Sentinels with auto cannons, missile launchers, and LAS cannons can now s stay that extra six inches away, and that will help protect them from enemy anti armor firepower. Like we said with the tanks, having an extra 6 inch range means that the enemy will probably not be in range of your sentinels turn 1. And sentinels being a much smaller vehicle than um, uh, than Lieben Russes, they're much easier to string along your back line. Much easier to keep out of range of the enemy. So, that's cool. The final thing is a non-unique Astra Militarum stratagem. Everyone gets this, and it's for uh, Scout Sentinels as well, and it's it's Go Recon. Scout Sentinels can sacrifice firepower for speed, dart you across the battlefield and search for new threats. Use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase, select a unit of Scout Sentinels from your army. This unit can immediately move 2d6, but cannot shoot or charge this turn. Um, that's kind of cool. It's one command point. Uno command pointio. Now, I think that's very good. I think that's very, very powerful uh, because it is a good way of snagging line breaker. It's also a really good thing to have in Maelstrom missions because Scout Sentinels, they can move up pretty fast anyway, but you can advance them so you get your move plus your advance. I'm not entirely sure what Scout Sentinels move is, it's, I think it's 8 inches, but you've got 8 inches... Uh, oh, is it more? No, it's way, it must be more than that. Anyway, you've got your Scout Sentinel movement plus advance plus... Basically, you get to move plus... And you get to advance. How I would see it is you get to move plus advance 3d6. That's a good way of thinking about it. That is great if you need to get onto a certain objective, if you need to get line breaker in the last few turns, if you need to control multiple objectives if you just need to deny your opponent an objective for a turn shove a unit of three scout sentinels on there fantastic um yeah it's a really really good 
little stratagem for objective grabbing. Absolutely uh, fantastic. This would be really um, potent if vehicles still had armor values because you could use this this to get sort of two units of, sc a sc units of scout sentinels forward and try and get on the flank of the enemy. But that doesn't really matter anymore. What this go recon order is really um, stratagem is really good at shoving units of sentinels onto objectives and not having to use an order to use move 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 and therefore waste some firepower because moving moves is great it's absolutely great for using in a clutch but what if you really really need that firepower what if it's balls to the wall you need every single shot um but your scouts you know every or you or you, you just can't afford to get uh to to pull your infantry back, you need to pin the enemy in place. You don't know what it might be. Maybe move, move, move just isn't an option. Maybe you need every order for a, to use every single shot. Now you can use uh, go go recon to grab those objectives. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a video game nut, as uh, you know any sort of nerd is. Um, Go recon. It reminds me. No, tell me if I tell me if you think this is correct. It reminds me of from Half Life One, and in Half Life One, when you, I don't know if any of you guys have played it, but Half Life One, when the uh, when the soldiers first turn up, one of the things they often say when they are repositioning is "Go recon." So I kind of feel like this is a sort of reference to. Uh, Half-Life. Maybe I'm wrong, but there's. I feel like Games Workshop have been throwing a few references around. You know, uh, uh, Forge World Metallica is an obvious one. Go re. Uh, maybe I'm reading into it. I just feel uh, like that's that's the ref. That's what it. The moment I read it, that's what it reminded me of. So this has been a really really long video, but that's because the Vostroyan, uh doctrine affects a lot of things in the Imperial Guard army, and we've done a literally we've done a weapon breakdown by breakdown. I was going to say a weapon, a weapon by weapon breakdown of how effective the destroying order is going to be. So the video is, of course, going to be pretty long. Now, something we've got to to look forward to later today. You know, obviously, you guys were watching this video in the morning. Something we've got for look, something to look forward to later today is the Valhallans will be coming out, and we will have the changes to conscripts and a little sneak peek: the return of a classic, a much loved rule. What do you think that... I want you to tell me what you think in the comments that much love rule could be. I think it could be send in the next wave. That is my bet for it. Possibly send the next wave. Some people on the internet think it could be veteran doctrines. But that's sort of like multiple rules, isn't it? Veteran doctrines. Where send in the next wave, it's related to the Valhallans with all their conscripts. It's in keeping with the conscript changes they're going to reveal tomorrow. And it is a much love rule. I think... Uh, my bet would be that it's not going to just be a random um, Valhallen uh, sort of just unique trait. I think it's going to be a command trait like Tide of Traitors for Chaos, for Alpha Legion. Tell me what you guys think the much return the return of the classic and much love rule will be tell me what you think of the Vestroyan reveal is the order a bit rubbish i feel like the order is terrible go recon is okay i'm liking the fact that mo a lot of the stratagems we've seen are just one command point i can throw a command point at something anytime one command point is won't break the bank we have access to lots of command points and i feel like they'll often be kind of useful uh, and tell me if there's any weapons that I've missed out that will be uh, benefited from the heirloom weapons. I think I've covered every single one. Uh, but if I've missed anything, please, please let me know. And of course, Vestroyan players out there, leave down in the comments, how excited are you for this reveal? How excited are you? Because I'm bloody excited for you. I feel like the Vestroyan one and the Mordian one are kind of equal. I feel like the Mordian order is better and... The um, Vestroyan, the Morning Order is better, but the Vestroyan tactic is less situational. So, tell me what you guys think. It's a long, long video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Sorry if I've been waffling on. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.